Our next award of the evening is the H. Council Trenholm Award. It is presented each year in conjunction with the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Sylvia Cyrus, the association's executive director, is here to help present this year's award. As executive secretary of the American Teachers Association, H. Council Trenholm was a key figure in gaining opportunities for teachers of color. That mission lives today in the work of Dr. Cecil Canton, a member of the California Faculty Association. He's an advocate for diversity in the unions, diversity in the classroom, and diversity in our hearts and our minds. I work with the Council for Affirmative Action. The council is comprised of 23 representatives who represent each campus in the CSU system. And our function, if you will, is to be the conscience of our union. The California Faculty Association adopted an anti-racism social justice transformation resolution a couple of years ago. And what it's allowed us to do is to really take on the, the issue of representation and inclusion in our, in our organization. Because if we're not as inclusive as we want to be, then we're not as strong as we can be. Cecil is definitely seen on campus as an individual that's an asset that contributes to really looking to making equity and access and change um, accessible for all, especially our students. The students who are generally majority students of color the majority of students are first in their family to come to college. They are struggling to pay tuition. We want the legislature and the governor to recognize the challenges that this 500,000 students in this system, you know, they've got to somehow find a way to keep education as something that's possible, that's possible for these young people. Otherwise, what's going to happen is um, they, you know, it's either, you're going to either educate them or you're going to wind up incarcerating them. So, you know, that's what we're seeing. That's been the options. 30 years ago, they were, they were funding students at a much higher rate than they are now. The difference is that, that the student body was more white at that time. Now that it's 72% you know, somewhere in that neighborhood of, of students of color, they're not, they, they're not funding it at the same level. In fact, they're, they're funding it much less. Ultimately, it's all about the students. And if we, as a, if, the, if the California Faculty Association can be the tip of the spear in the system to, to start to introduce anti-racism principles, principles of fairness, principles of justice, then we can change a system so that everyone feels equally welcome to, uh, to, to come to an institution like this and be able to advance themselves as far as they can go. Join me in welcoming Dr. Cecil Canton. I love you too. <laughs> Good evening, young union brothers, sisters, social justice friends, and supporters. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the California Faculty Association <laughs> for nominating me and the National Education Association for recognizing and presenting me with the prestigious 2018 H. Council Trenholm Memorial Award. It's my honor to accept this award on behalf of my colleagues in the California Faculty Association who have made both an organizational and personal commitment to the fight for justice, both in our union and in our institutions. Now, I have attended several human and civil rights awards dinners in the past, and I have to admit to being somewhat uncomfortable when I first received news that I was to be one of the honorees at this year's event. When we were young, our mother taught my brothers and me that we should always stand up for justice whenever and wherever we encountered injustice in our lives. She told us that we must stand up for justice even if it meant that we were the only ones standing. 
That admonition was further centered in my life when I heard Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King tell the world that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So you can imagine my surprise at being recognized for doing what my mother told me to do. <laughs> my first thought that was that it was my mother who should be recognized for this award, not me. And then a colleague, on hearing my apparent dilemma, explained to me that I wasn't receiving the award for any particular achievement. I was being recognized for my pursuit of fairness and equity in my union. I was being honored for my commitment to and belief in the principles of justice and my persistent quest in the face of resistance, in the face of sometimes hostility and benign neglect for not allowing our union to forget its responsibility to stand up for anti-racism and social justice. In these times, with unions under siege, it's all the more important to stand up for justice. Let us all stand up for justice. And remember that justice is everybody's right and everybody's fight. Thank you, NEA, CTA. CFA for making this one of the proudest moments of my life. I thank you.